What's happening, Black Healing Matters family? This is Danielle here at the Black Healing Matters podcast, where we offer you ideas to hopefully move you one step closer to your healing. And we do it every day, Monday to Friday. So you are still here with us. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Uh, if, if you're not new, thank you for rocking with us on the regular. And as you know, Thursdays, if you've been here before, you know that Thursdays are doing the right things Thursdays, where we go out of our way to catch someone, not in the act of doing something wrong or shameful, but actually catch someone in the act of doing something right. And that's exactly what I have for you today. So during these, uh, during this segment, Thursday segments, we usually interview someone or we hear from someone uh, who is actually doing amazing things, a black person on this planet who is doing great things. And, you know, you'd be surprised that there are so many amazing people, black people doing awesome things. And again, the reason it's surprising is because you just don't hear about it all that often. And that's a shame. So that's why we do this because we're trying to change that narrative and literally put people on the spot, bring them uh, right into the spotlight so that we can begin to see ourselves more often in a positive light. And today, that's exactly what I have for you. Super excited to bring you this interview today by none other than oh, the multifaceted jack of many trades, musician, most notably known as a worldwide, world-famous musician, Akon. Now, if you know who Akon is, you probably heard his music before, but did you know that Akon is also an amazing businessman? And last week on the podcast, we, I believe it was last Thursday, uh, we heard from an interview from Malens Bart Williams, who's also uh, really into the economic empowerment of Africa. Well, today we're going to hear from your, guy, your man, Akon, and we're going to hear about his initiative and how he is working for profit. Okay. This is not charity, but in a for profit business, the businesses rather that he's created on the continent of Africa to not only enrich himself, but to enrich the lives and the infrastructure of the people living on the con for the people living in the continent. Okay. All right. Hope you enjoy this as much as I have. As always, fam, stay blessed. Of course, connect with me, Facebook, Black Healing Matters group, also on YouTube and SoundCloud. Okay. Of course, there's always good old fashioned email to blackhealingmatters at gmail.com. If you want to get at me, please do leave me a comment, call in, let me know what you think of this episode of this, this interview. Did you know uh, all that you're going to hear about well, if after you heard it? Did I'm, I want to know, did you know these things about Akon? I did not. I knew who Akon was, but I had no idea that he was this deep in business, real business, fam. Listen, to, listen closely. It's about 25 minutes. Interview done with Al Jazeera is dope. As always, stay blessed. Black Healing Matters. Musician, songwriter, producer. Senegalese American artist Akon has sold over 35 million records worldwide. He's probably best known for hit songs like Locked Up, Don't Matter, and collaborations with some of the biggest names in music Michael Jackson, David Guetta, and Lady Gaga, to name just a few. But Akon is also an activist, a philanthropist. Hands up high, peace signs up high! He devotes a lot of time to promoting peace in conflict zones like the Democratic Republic of Congo. I wanna be free, I wanna be, wanna be free. 
and a lot of money on an ambitious project to improve the quality of life of one million Africans by bringing them electricity. He's doing good, but making money at the same time. But there is also controversy about his lyrics and performance style. We caught up with Akon in Dubai. He talks music, business, and being an African in America. Akon talks to Al Jazeera. Akon, thank you so much for talking to Al Jazeera. No, absolutely. Now, very few artists are able to take their celebrity and build it into a brand that goes far beyond the art, the music in your mm -hmm. case. Now, you seem to be succeeding in doing just this. What's the secret? Well, it's not really a secret. I mean, you got to be a businessman first. You know, this is a music business. Some people, more relating to artists, they exclude the business and they have other people that run it. And, but ultimately, when I create musically, I figure out how is that music can be maximized in a way to So are you then are you then a businessman first and then a musician second? I'll, yeah, I started off as a hustler. So I'm f first businessman then uh, <laughs> a musician. All right. For sure. You've got quite a lot going on, a clothing line, uh, nightclubs, mm -hmm. investments in Africa, I, a diamond mine even I hear in South Africa. Uh, what is this? Is this like social capitalism? I mean, you are making money obviously. What do you say to people who say, oh, this is all just, you know, a way for Akon to make money? That's, it's well, not it, really... It's, it is a way for me to make money. So you, It's clearly a business. It's a business. Yeah, right? do not get it twisted. It's a real business. It's just ultimately at the stage where I'm at now, I only want to get into business that's going to help people. It's going to change lives. It's going to make a difference. Because I can be an artist and just, you know, be on stage and do endorsements and just make money, literally. But I have, I'm in a position where I'm gifted in a, in a place where... I've been offered opportunities where I can make a difference and change lives. So why not make money and change lives at the same time? Social capitalism. Then. Basically, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk a bit more about your Africa-focused ventures. I want to start off with uh, Akon Lighting Africa. What's been achieved? We actually overachieved. <laughs> uh, we're beyond a million households now. We're actually in 14 countries. Um, we started with just creating uh, solar energy for rural areas in the and in, in house homes and then now we're doing solar street lamps all through countries and also in, um, incorporating it within each country. We're putting um, solar in all the villages and we're also creating a system to where we're actually employing all the locals to be able to maintain it and also you know keep everything pretty much in order. Mm, but know, but I mean you, you have to acknowledge that it's a huge challenge to bring electricity to Africa. I mean five million people don't have power yeah. and only one percent of private sector investments actually go to Africa and, and you know I wonder when you say you're in 14 countries how many people have you actually reached? Like for instance uh, Guinea Conakry for instance right we're in Guinea Conakry uh, we have 30,000 street lamps there and it's all solar uh, these are areas where you couldn't even drive or even walk out at night so you wouldn't even have a clue where you're going so all those areas and people in that path, it's actually affecting. And then we also have over 100,000 home systems um, in selected villages in those areas. And we're still expanding in those areas. And that's just one country. And I wonder, how was the initiative received by, by the different African governments in Guinea, Senegal? I mean, because these are governments that are often criticized for not doing Absolutely. enough uh, you know, when it comes to electricity, I mean, President Macky Sall in Senegal mm -hmm. was heavily criticized when he started. Did they welcome your initiative? I think every single country was a little specifically suspicious because they was like, okay, he's a music guy. What is he doing in energy? You know, so it was always that. But we came fully prepared for all, you know, uh, answers to every question. And we also came prepared to execute. So we didn't come into these countries with an idea. We already put together full team, full infrastructure. So from the moment we came in, we came in creating pilots. We didn't even ask the country for any money. We put up our own money in the beginning and allowed the president. How much to money are we talking? Well, it depend on the pilot, you know. But we allowed them to choose the village that they would want electrified first, just to give them a scope of work, how we work, and so on and so forth. And ultimately, after that, they were all in full belief. And then we continued and did the whole country afterwards. Mm. Yeah. But how much money, again, did you invest in this particular project? Collectively, I don't have all the accounting, but per 
village, it can range from 100,000 to 250,000 just for a pilot. There is Acon Lighting Africa. Um, you've also uh, joined the nonprofit organization Peace One Day mm -hmm. uh, with a huge concert in Goma in the east of the DRC earlier this year. Tell us about that experience. What, what's the objective? Well, with Peace One Day, it's, um, it's really a, a, a huge event that just promotes peace. Um, it's that one day in the year where you just ask yourself, who do I want to make peace with? You know, um, We oftentimes are conflicted and no one's communicating. Like, You could be mad at me for a whole year and a half and we haven't even spoke. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, a lot of times, it's just all miscommunication. So Peace One Day is that moment that we try to create annually that can create that moment for people to communicate. What was it like to perform at the airport in Goma? No, no, listen. The, the, just putting that concert together, I mean, it was a whole year of preparation. And we couldn't find a venue big enough to do it. And we ultimately, you know, reached out to the government and see if we can take the airport, the runway at the airport, because that was the only place where we can create a concert that would allow so many people there. And it was just an experience. I mean, it was amazing. Very, very well. But you know, Ikon, once the concert is over, these people in Goma go back to their daily lives of yeah. hardship, of war, because that's the reality for them. Well, war. That's war, what they've war known. War is a choice. It, war is a choice. Well, well, so the I'm thing is, the thing is this, right? Everyone has to go back to their daily lives, but they won't go back to their daily lives with the same mind state they walked into it with. But I mean, who's I'm, going to war? I mean, it's, it's not the people who came to see your concert. They're the victims. So who should your message really be addressed well, to? the thing is this. A war can only happen if it's supported by the people. I mean, it's, it's simple. It's people that carry guns and shoot. Mm. You a person. Like, these are people that do it. So they have to be the one to make that difference and that change. And they have to say, you know what, I'm not doing this. What difference do you think it's made for the people of Goma? I, admit, I mean, if I look at, if I could save one life in a year that was meant to not be here, I think it's a difference made. So when you take a whole day of no guns, no firepower, no bombs, no nothing, it's just straight peace, you know how many lives were saved that day? It was a lot. It may not be, you know, to people's standards as a difference made, but mm. to me, one life, you know, gone is a difference made. It's been a very busy year for you. Uh, in addition to Peace One Day, there's also the silent campaign for Ebola, uh, which uh, was launched by uh, One, the One campaign, right? Mm. I mean, we saw several artists, Bono, Pew, Angelique Kidjo, Femi Kuti, just to name a few African artists, take part in this silent campaign that's urging basically governments to do more in the fight uh, against Ebola. I'm almost tempted to say, you know, this is a cynical voice in me, there you go again, you know, Africa needing help from foreigners. Absolutely. I think it's a, it's a issue that Africa has to face as well too. And I think we play a huge role. We just have to rebrand our continent because when you look at prime example, just the Ebola crisis in general, you know, a lot of it stemmed in certain parts of Africa, you know, um, and yes, it has to be contained in so many ways, but in a lot of ways, I think it's been overly exaggerated so much to where it's going to really affect Africa's economy in the future. What, what has been over-exaggerated? The Ebola crisis. I mean, think about it. Malaria has killed more people than Ebola. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really, mm -hmm. you know? But the way the media has portrayed this thing, and when you look at it, it's, all, it's a billion and change of people in Africa. This It's a couple of thousand people that's been affected, which is less than 0.1% of anyone getting touched or affected, but the fear of it is so strong that people wouldn't even want to travel to Africa mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. And that affects Africa's economy, affects its future, it affects the business. What do you think of these Western charity songs as a response to African emergencies? I mean, honestly, you want to applaud anyone that wants to do something great for, an, for a cause. And I'm sure everyone that's doing it has nothing but great intentions towards it. Mm -hmm. But the question is, once it's done, what is the action being taken afterwards? Because it's the same amount of people that's still infected. Actually, it's more now than it was before all this money raised. And it's only a few thousand people. So why isn't anything what happening? What do you think is happening to the money that's raised? Use your common sense. <laughs> it's not going to Africa. <laughs> where is it going? I, honestly, if I knew that question, I would definitely expose it. But I don't. Mm. I don't know where it's going. 
Well, you know, the reason I asked about what, what you thought about all these Western musicians and so on, because mm. there's a paternalistic view that still exists today, and this is like decades after colonialism and so on, that Africa still must be saved <laughs> yeah. by the West. Well, actually, honestly, believe it or not, that's actually true. But I don't think the word save is the right word for Africa. Because Africa, to an extent, has been the anchor to the rest of the world. Every natural resource that's keeping every country in the world operating is resources that's been pulled from Africa. Everyone benefits but Africa. So Africa doesn't need to be saved. Africa's the one doing the saving. Akon, you've said, if I could have my way, Africa would be the United States of Africa with just one leader. Of 100%. course, Mar Mar Marcus Garvey wrote a poem about this. Bob Marley sung about this. Muammar Gaddafi, the Libyan leader, poured his wealth into this idea of a United States of Africa. But really, is it, when you look at Africa today, a continent of over a billion people, over 2,000 different languages, right. is it realistic? Well, first of all, I think it has to be our generation and the generation that come after us to achieve it. I don't think this generation would ever be able to achieve it because there's too much history and it's too much built up into where it started today. It has to be set from a, uh, a generation that's clear from the history, clear from conflict, and see it, the world in a way that we see it. The only way Africa can evolve in that way is that we have to be united. There has to be a united Africa. It has to be one Africa. It can't be so many countries with so many leaders, so many opinions. You know, All those countries, I think, should be broken down into basically states. And there should be one president and he or she should be dem democratically elected by all Africans to do what's best for but, Africa. But I mean, in just one country already, it's so difficult to have a democratic election. How, how do you have a democratic election in, in, an, in a so-called uh, United States of Africa? How do you do that? It's not hard. I mean, listen, if China can do it, and they don't even have a democratic election. <laughs> so maybe what, so you know maybe, what I mean? maybe what democracy is, Something no, that Africa I mean, doesn't need, Africa, maybe. It, maybe there has it has to be, to be another form of rule. There has to be elections. If you want to keep Africa stable, there has to be elections. All we need is Africans to be able to govern themselves. What's stopping Africa from governing themselves now and creating that one Africa is that there's still foreigners in certain areas that still control Africa. <music>